Hey everyone, welcome back to Go Kick Me, your favorite crowdfunding news and reviews channel here on YouTube. So today we have another Fraud Back Friday, which is recapping, looking backwards towards some of the most infamous implosions in crowdfunding history. I think that's a good way to put it. Basically some of the biggest fails of all time for crowdfunding. First of all, apologies for the whispering. Uh, I'm actually on the road. I'm in New Zealand of all places. And uh, my kid is sleeping in the other room, so I'm going to be keep it on the DL, keep it quiet. So, um, so this is the Xano. This was in 2015, give or take. It was supposed to deliver by then. I think it started in 2014 or even earlier. And um, it's an intelligent swarming nano drone, uh, and it's supposed to be able to do all kinds of autonomous flight, like following you around, doing selfies, following gestures, etc. Uh, and they raised quite a lot of money. So from 12,000 backers, they raised 2.3 million pounds, which according to the current rate is something like $3.2 million. And they actually did pre-sales too. So direct sales to customers and they got even more. I think a couple hundred thousand more. So um, yeah, so what happened with this thing? Well, if you just take a quick look at the comments as of this month there's still or last month there's still people asking for refunds um so yeah what happened so turns out they went for a while and they did give good updates but ultimately they filed bankruptcy so in other words they blew through all their money and liquidated so how does a company who raised millions and millions of pounds it doesn't show, but I think their goal was actually only like 100,000 pounds, and they were like 20 times over. Um, and so how did they get so far past their goal and yet still implode? Well, it turns out their video promised quite a lot, and uh, it showed all kinds of cool things. What if you could now capture the bigger picture from any angle, allowing you and it seems to be quite close to production here. You know, so they have working prototypes. They're demonstrating the features. When we began work on Xano, our goal was to make aerial photography and video capture truly accessible to our taste to deliver a first-class product. For years, we've been providing solutions in the... And here's our CEO, who doesn't look at the camera at all. Echo sounding sonar. Infrared obstacle avoidance systems, GPS sensor, it has all the data fusing and correction is that simple. So why do we need your help? To make Xano truly accessible to everyone, we need to get the volumes up so the price goes down. It's as simple as that. We're really excited to bring this technology to you guys. We just need some help getting over the final hurdle. We just need some help getting over the final hurdle. We need the volume to go up so the price goes down. It's just that simple. So, um... It's another case where they say, oh, we just have the final hurdle, we just need the money. Uh, but clearly history has shown that that was not really the case. They had a lot of problems as far as sourcing and software development and probably hardware development. So um, one of the questions is how legitimate is this video and the demonstrations, or is it all fake? Because apparently they weren't anywhere near having it work as it should, as it had been promised to. Um, so there's a bit of press covering this one. Uh, this is the most infamous. Uh, let's see if I can. This guy was actually paid by Kickstarter to do an investigative report about how Xano raised millions on Kickstarter and left most backers with nothing. So he goes into a really detailed thing on the history of the company, the people who started it, and how they basically got into this area it was like it's actually kind of depressing because the guy was just sort of a um, self-educated tech developer and he uh, yeah so see the original goal was like 200,000 190,000 so and they got like more than 10 times more than that and so anyway yeah they talk about how this company started and they were sort of involved in all kinds of other stuff except drones and then the guy got into drones so they decided to do a drone so and they talk about what happened with the prototypes what happens with the first ones they mailed out they sent them to people who pre-ordered on the web not the uh, 
not the crowdfunding people who had been waiting so long. Um, yeah, here he is. Why don't you look at the camera? Um, and so even the background on the guys here, Mr. Ivan Reed man. And uh, so anyway, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. It's actually super long and super detailed. And they talk about how they got an incubator, how they did this and that. I didn't even read through all of it. Um, but the fact is, you know, they spent a lot of money. And uh, they actually leased vehicles, which I think is insane. And they parked in a handicapped spot, which is also insane. Um, but anyway, so this guy really did his homework. He goes detail on what was happening with it, what, where they actually were. Um, and let's just leave it with his sort of final thoughts on here. So he does a TDL, T TLD or, um, on here. And basically... Uh, these guys had a shitty track record to begin with, so always check the track record. Um, but of course, it's not really clear because they changed names and reorganize. Um, but they had promised to have this thing in the market in six months, and you know, years went by and they were nowhere near that. Um, they couldn't demonstrate it in person at CES because it didn't actually work. Um, and yeah, yada yada yada. So. They were act. They did actually try to do it. They didn't just steal the money, although it does say that they paid themselves more than they probably should and wasted money on things like cars, um, but no criminal fraud. And likewise, these guys made a well-attentioned attempt to develop, manufacture, and deliver this consumer drone. Um, but basically, they had over-ambitious deadlines and over-ambitious stats they were offering. They had stretch goals, and because they raised so much money, they had to actually do the stretch goals which has made the whole thing harder. So it was sort of a bad concept and design from the beginning. Um, kind of with those kind of goals, like actually raising that much money made things worse, not better. So the thing was designed, you know, not good. Anyway, so um, goes on how they're liquidating, et cetera, et cetera. The guy, when the dude uh, resigned, et cetera. So I think the takeaway here is... Um, you know, the, the, he doesn't believe that they were fraudulent, but they basically didn't possess the technical or commercial competencies necessary um, as specified. So that's a big thing. You got to have experienced people in the team, or you have to find people who are willing to work with, you know, find those people and partner with them. Um, work with the incubator program, work with a major manufacturer to develop the whole process, not just, you know, send them some CAD files. Um, and one of the things that they mentioned sort of as a takeaway, so I should note that this article was actually commissioned by Kickstarter by an investigative reporter. Um, and so he basically says Kickstarter and other crowdfunding platforms should reconsider the way they deal with projects involving complex hardware, massive overfunding, or large sums of money. Uh, and a better mechanism to identify weak projects before they fund. I guess that's my job, <laughs> um, if possible, as well as new processes to provide mentorship, support, and advice. So there are actually some platforms like this, some incubators or kind of big companies that work with, you know, manufacturers that work with them to do mentorship. Um, so, yeah, there, there are some market solutions out there, but... I agree totally. There should be a way to pre-screen these things or somehow, you know, make sure that they 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 have any chance of getting anywhere, which apparently these guys didn't. Uh, all they had a chance to do was waste a lot of money, uh, you know, literally millions of dollars. So anyway, I'll include a link to this article if you really want to read through it uh, in the description. Here we go. Uh, and this is from medium.com. Mark Harris, if you just want to Google it. Um, but yeah, let's take a look at the links if you want. Otherwise, lesson is always buyer beware. So beware of who's making it. Beware of overpromising. Beware of fraudulent videos because apparently what they showed in these videos is, you know, the hardware it was nowhere near it being able to do at that time. So it looks like maybe they're just using a fishing line uh, to move the thing around. Who knows? Um, this thing is kind of gimmicky, 
Uh, anyway, so hope you guys learned a lesson. Um, seems like drones are really popular, but also high likelihood to fail. So anyway, check us out on Facebook and Twitter at Go Kick Me, and stay tuned next Friday for another Fraud Back Friday Spectacular Implosion. I've got a whole list of them. Uh, see you guys soon.